Hello all. As we're now entering the Oxford interview season, with physics interviews set to take place in early to mid-December as usual, I thought I'd give a few tips that might help you cope with your physics interviews a little better. Some of these are pretty generic and could be applicable to any kind of academic or professional interview, but some will be physics specific and some in particular will be Oxford specific. So I hope you find them useful. Number one, don't panic. This is one of the no-brainers really. Try to stay calm and collected during the interview. The tutors have invited you to interview because they clearly think you're a very able student. You've done very well just to get this far and it's a testament to how hard you've worked in your subject and to your ability that you've even been invited to an interview. You deserve to be there and the tutors want you to do well. They won't try to trick you or trip you up, they want you to do well and they'll do their best to help you do well as long as you let them and don't get in your own way. Number two, know your personal statement. Tutors really do read your personal statement and anything you write in there could quite reasonably be asked about during an interview. In most cases, however, your statement is quite unlikely to come up at all. Sometimes a tutor might ask you a light question about some aspect, but often this is just to sort of ease you into the interview uh, and get you comfortable with the format. But of course, if you've written something particularly interesting in your statement, like reading a very advanced textbook, you can expect to be asked a little bit more about something like this. Number three, don't fake it. Sometimes, when a student has seen an interview question before, they'll try to play off like they're seeing it for the first time and they're just figuring it out very quickly on the spot. Don't do this. Of the tutors interviewing you, many have been doing this a very long time. If you've seen a question before and you're acting like you haven't, they will pretty likely be aware of this. No matter how good of an actor you think you are, I can guarantee that your acting skills will be put under considerable pressure in the stressful environment of an interview. If you've seen a question before, or one very similar to it, just let the tutors know, and they'll either ask you to just talk through it, and you should be able to go through it pretty quickly, uh, or they'll give you a different question, and then you can work through that as usual. Number four, it's not what you know. Don't focus too much on what you know. If you've got to this stage, it's pretty likely you've done a lot of extra reading around your subject, which is a really great thing and will help your application a lot. But that's not so much what the interviews are about. The interviewers aren't looking to find out how much extra material you already know, they're looking to find out how much you can be pushed to figure out new things from the things you already know, or rather, the things you're already supposed to know, or assume to know, uh, under your A-level syllabus. Sometimes when students are given a question, they'll spend too long thinking about how they may might answer it using some advanced technique or material beyond the syllabus that they've studied, but this really isn't the right way to go about things at the start. The tutors wouldn't ask you something if it couldn't be figured out using ordinary A-level or equivalent material. Always start from the bottom. Think about how you might get to this result yourself, how you could figure it out, rather than trying to relate it to some previously recalled advanced thing you've already seen. After you finish the question, then by all means, mention the advanced material you've studied and how you think this might relate to it, but this shouldn't be your first step. Number five, think aloud. A mistake a lot of students make is to sit and stare at the whiteboard without saying anything. Of course, you do need to think about questions, and you're not expected to just know the answer or be able to say how you're going to solve it right away, but you should articulate your thinking and describe your thought processes throughout. By letting the tutors know what you're thinking, what you're ruling out, what you think the next step might be, you help them to help you. The interview isn't meant to be a straightforward question and answer session, it's supposed to be a dialogue between you and the tutors. You can clarify things with the tutors and test ideas aloud on them, and if they think you're going down the wrong route, or there might be an easy way to do something, they'll give you a prompt to help you along with that. This is really the main point of the interview, for the tutors to figure out if you're somebody that they can teach, someone that can deal with unfamiliar questions and identify the sticking point in the problem you're trying to solve, and then act on and respond to the advice given by the tutor during the interview or tutorial. Number six, perform sanity checks. In your interviews, you're guaranteed to do quite a bit of maths. This could involve applying techniques from your A-level maths course to physical problems in ways you might not have seen before. It's tempting when you're doing a long calculation to just crank the wheel and power through and wait until you get a number out. But in physics, it's important to do regular sanity checks to check that our answers are plausible and reflect some possible physical reality. For example, if you're trying to calculate the mass of the sun based on 
uh, some data about the different planets in the solar system and their orbits, and you end up with a value for the mass of the Sun of 100 kilograms, that's a result you should think twice about. Always relate your answers back to the reality that they're trying to describe. If they seem too ridiculous to be true, often it means that they are wrong. Number seven, listen carefully. When the tutors give you a prompt, make sure you take it on board and act on it. If they point you in one direction, say suggesting you draw a sketch of a curve or sketch of the problem to help you solve it, make sure you do it. Don't just keep going with the same strategy you had before. I know it seems obvious, but a lot of students really don't listen to this. It's hard when you think the way you're approaching a problem might work, and indeed it possibly would work, to then change your tactic midway through. But it is a valuable skill, and something you'll have to get used to if you want to keep studying physics. Number eight, remember the earlier parts of the question. Sometimes the way interview questions will work is that the tutor will introduce some new idea or simple example of a problem, and then as you go through the interview, you'll slowly build up and make the problem more complicated or create a more general case or more difficult example of the same problem. It's always worth bearing in mind the earlier points you were asked in a given question. Generally, if the tutors ask you something at the beginning of a question with multiple parts, it's because it will be relevant later. Number nine, know your A-level content. This is another obvious point. Oxford interviews are academic interviews. In order for you to answer difficult maths and physics questions, you need to be on top of all of the content you're expected to know. It's reasonable to assume that this presumed knowledge corresponds to all of the same topics that are relevant for the PAT, or the PAT. Within this content, there are definitely some things that come up more than others. A few areas I've noticed tutors like to ask questions on are buoyancy problems involving Archimedes' principle, resistor networks like, for example, if you've got a 3D cube where every edge you place a resistor and you want to find the resistance between different vertices on this cube. Uh, and also sketching problems are very popular, so it would be a good idea to practice some of those things before the interviews. Number 10, drawing and writing things down. Pretty much all the questions you'll be asked to do will likely involve some form of calculation. It's therefore very important that you set all of your working out in a linear and neat fashion so that if you've made a mistake and you need to go back and find it to fix it, it's much more straightforward to do. Even outside of long calculations, noting things down on the whiteboard or on paper during online interviews is a really helpful way of keeping things straight in your head. This could include making a note of what it is you're trying to find out or keeping track of what it is you've already worked out in this question. Drawing pictures is also really important. Often being able to do a quick sketch of a problem will make something uh, about the problem that wasn't clear before a lot more obvious to you and can help you with your working out. As I mentioned before, curve sketching questions are a big favourite of tutors to ask, so practising some general techniques of those beforehand can be very useful. I'm working on an article post on my website at the moment outlining some general techniques to help you with these difficult curve sketching questions. So check back in a few days and I'll put a link in the description and also on my Twitter page. So those are my 10 tips for performing at Oxford Physics interviews. If you found any of them useful, please think about subscribing and following me on Twitter. And if you think I missed anything important, please do let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.